So if we talk about error propagation and we want to calculate the maximum error of a variable y, uh, which is a function of other variables, in this case, then measurements, uh, x1, x2, and so on. So let's imagine um, y would be the power. Then, of course, the power is a function of voltage and current. So x1 would be the voltage, x2, the, x2, the current. And then the question is, how big is the maximum error in the power if we know the errors of voltage and current? And then you can see that for the maximum error, we sum up the absolute error influences. I call it error influences because it's not only the error, it's the error multiplied with the sensitivity coefficient, with this, which is the partial derivative, but that's not too important so far. Um, the most important is we sum up the absolute value of these individual error influences. And if we talk about typical measurement uncertainty, that means we are talking about random errors. And we know, for example, the probability distribution and the standard deviation of those uh, um, variables. Then we can do the error propagation with the Gaussian error propagation formula. And as you can see in the result, this is not the sum of the absolute values, but it is this kind of a squared sum or geometric sum. And this is if you would insert the same values as for the above one here then this leads, of course, to a smaller value. And that gets clear if you think about the fact that um, systematic errors um, are always fixed, but the, the random errors um, can be one, one for one measurement. One value is a bit too high. For the next one, the value is a bit uh, too low. And um, this is also for the different quantities. One quantity may be a bit too, too high, the other one a bit lower. And then at the end, um, errors can cancel out. And for this reason, we do it with the Gaussian error propagation. And we can now use these formulas to apply that on the active power. In this easy example, the DC active power, which is um, well, well known as the product of the DC voltage and the DC current. And if you now apply on that formula the Gaussian error propagation, then you will see as a result that the relative measurement uncertainty of active power is equal to the um, <clears throat> squared sum of the relative measurement uncertainty of the voltage and the related measurement uncertainty of the current. And you can also do that for the easy example of uh, sinusoidal AC quantities, so ideal sinusoidal AC quantities. Then, of course, the phase shift between voltage and current uh, is also here included in the formula. But um, this is, of course, nice and important and um, it's also useful to do this in the first step because if you think about um, electric drive applications the electric machine represents a, a high inductive load therefore the currents are more or less sinusoidal as we saw in the measurements before and um, for this reason most of the active power is transferred in the fundamental and if you know the measurement uncertainty of the fundamental that's a good estimate to to guess how big the overall measurement uncertainty of the total power could be. But of course, if you want to go into detail, we need something different. And um, this is what we, what we want to, to achieve with this, the measurement uncertainty of power measurement for arbitrary waveforms. And for this, um, we would have to start at the point that the active power is defined as average of the instantaneous power over the fundamental period. But of course, this is a yeah, mathematical analytical challenge to do that in general for all arbitrary waveforms. But what is done on the measurement system, if we look how it is calculated over there, this is the discrete representation of, um, of an average. And what is done is for, for each sample time, we measure voltage and current, we multiply that. This gives you the instantaneous power value of this sample. And then we sum up over n samples and divide by the number of n, which is then again the average. Of course, n depends on the ratio of sample frequency to fundamental frequency if we link the averaging to the fundamental cycle of the electric um, signals. But it can also be uh, a timed average. So this is not restricted in this formula. It's only a mean value. And for this, we can again easily apply the um, <clears throat> Gaussian error propagation, which leads to this button formula. And 
This one is now again a suitable method to, to uh, estimate or calculate measurement uncertainty of active power for arbitrary waveforms. What is important here to, to state as well is that this formula does so far not contain bandwidth effects, so sensors which are of course limited in bandwidth somewhere, and um, also filter properties, for example. But it's, um, it's possible to consider this in addition as well. And now we see that, that we have also for dynamic signals um, a measurement uncertainty propagation formula, but now the question is what are the main challenges by evaluating this? And therefore, <clears throat> it's obvious that each individual active power value um, is calculated from a number of n samples of voltage and uh, current, and each of these voltage and current samples uh, then again contains an amount of measurement uncertainty which propagates to the active power. And this measurement uncertainty of each sample is contains then some systematic errors and some random errors. Systematic error is again if you think about um, the manufacturing tolerance, perhaps um, a capacitor or resistance in the input amplifier of the of the data acquisition system is a bit too big or too small, and therefore the scaling or the offset is influenced. Then this error is the same or influences the measurement result on this individual channel for each sample in the same way, and therefore it cannot be compensated by increasing the number of samples we use for averaging. That's typical for systematic errors. We cannot make them smaller by increasing the number of, of uh, samples which we use for averaging. On the other side, we have um, random errors, such as noise, for example. And if you think about noise, this is not the same from sample to sample. For one instant in time, it can be a bit too big, for the next instant in time, it is a bit too small, and therefore um, it may cancel out um, each other from sample to sample. And for this, these errors may be reduced by increasing the averaging interval. That's also the reason why a lot of people who are or who need high accuracy, they do not average the active power over only one fundamental cycle. They take a multiple integer of it. And um, <clears throat> as you can see from all those things, it is really important if you read through the data sheets that the interpretation and the categorization of um, error influences is, is, is really important. It's one of the, the bases. And <clears throat> we can take a closer look here again. So if we take, for example, um, only one quantity, the current, then <clears throat> the current measurement um, for in order to measure the current, we have uh, a lot of different sensors in the measuring chain. Um, for example, the current transducer over here, the burden resistor, and the input amplifier, or the power card in this case. And all of them, um, yeah, yeah, contain um, measurement uncertainty, and of course, in addition to the environmental conditions, and. Um, <clears throat> So what we what we should do is we need to calculate the measurement uncertainty of all of those components, and then each component, if you look into the data sheets of those components, each component is specified with different influencing effects. If I say influencing effects, I talk about things like temperature, temperature depending errors, aging dependent errors, um, nonlinearity error, or as magnetic field influence, and all those things. And um, if we now have the different influencing effects of all those components, these may again be specified in different ways. Some of them are absolute values, which means for currents perhaps several microamps or milliamps, and um, others are uh, specified rel relatively uh, with respect to measuring value or measuring range. And some of them are specified in a combination of both or all three. And <clears throat> No, all three, not both. <laughs> and the, uh, the total measurement uncertainty is then, of course, a result of the superposition of all this information. And for DC and AC, this can be yeah, quite or not, not, not too difficult, but it starts to get complicated uh, also there. 
And of course, it is uh, really difficult if you do that then for dynamic signals. And um, what, what we are doing at the moment, we are developing a tool who does that for our customers, the measurement uncertainty tool. And here you can see a screenshot of, of the first uh, prototype version of this measurement uncertainty tool. If you take a look on it, and if you remember the beginning of the presentation, we had the battery, which uh, of course, is kind of a DC power. We have the inverter output, which, which is kind of an AC power, and we have the electric machine with a mechanical power. And what you then do in this tool is you specify the hardware which you uh, yeah, used for your measurements. So the, the module, uh, the, the current transducers, uh, the, the torque transducers, how speed is measured. Then you specify, of course, important the ambient um, conditions, such as the ambient temperature interval, uh, mean max temperature, the time which has elapsed since last calibration, all those side effects. And then you can calculate the measurement uncertainty. And what you get as a result is you get the specified power, which you measure, the power range, and also the measurement uncertainty as absolute and also as relative information. And of course, this is a first first step to do that uh, offline for steady state operating points. But uh, you can imagine the, the long term long term goal is that we that, that we specify that uh, with the measured value. And um, this is a, a really nice uh, method to do that, and it um, of course uh, makes it much easier for the customers because, as you saw from the slides before, it is really quite a lot of effort to do that manually, hand by hand, going through all the data sheets. And it is often difficult to yeah, categorize what is a systematic, what is a random error, and all those things. 